Hey guys, welcome back to Diet Jesus. My name is Maple. And I'm Ariana. And today we are watching Peaky Blinders. We're on season six, episode one, the final stretch, guys. The last season. I know. And if you like what you see here, please check out our Patreon and then know we have stuff. Yep. We just have stuff on our Patreon. There's full length watch along. And then you can sometimes have, and then we have early access to future <laughs> edits before they go live on our channel. And I am so great at intros. <laughs> you get, yeah. So you can come hang out with us, join there. community chats. We've got uh, full length reactions. So they're completely uncut. And then um, when the editors finish editing a reaction early, it goes on there first before it releases on YouTube. Um, and we're generally way farther ahead. What she said. That's the what, right way. <laughs> Don't mm. like that. Oh, yeah. Yep. I don't love the fog. Arthur took the bullets out. On the way back, he said you stopped at a crossroads to throw up. You're not even a soldier anymore, Tommy. You didn't check your weapon. You're not a soldier, you're a coward. Ooh! I heard you pull the trigger. Leaving your family behind without a goodbye. If you still need a way out, here are six of them. Damn. Ooh. Mother, the lady passed through. They wouldn't let me pass. As if there were to be another consequence. Wow. Oh my goodness. Let their phones ring for a long time. Hello? Mr. Shelby, I imagine you're curious as to who it was prevented the assassination last night. If you look out your window, you'll see a flag of truce. It's a unit of volunteers bringing the bodies of your dead to you to send to heaven in your own way. Last night's operation was carried out by soldiers from three Dublin brigades of the Irish Republican Army. IRA? We need to keep Mr. Mosley alive. That's all you need to know. We've made some changes to the structure of your organization. Ever since you began to build your empire, you've had a crutch to lean on. Last night, we kicked away that crutch. From now on, it will be us that you lean on. Please be aware, Mr. Shelby, that the deaths of your people are your own responsibility because you consistently fail to understand your own limitations. And she's calling him from, from his, his office. Oh my God. The third body was Polly. Cause only Abarama and the shooter died that night. Yeah. Cause Arthur got out. Bro. Mom, it was the ambitions and strategies of one man that caused this. I swear in the name of Almighty God. No matter what it takes, no matter how many lies I have to tell, I will take revenge on Tommy Shelby. Oh my God. Ooh. Ooh. Four years later. Jeez. What a time jump, bro. Jeez. France, Lickland Island, Newfoundland, French territory. That I have no idea. 
<laughs> oh, puppy, I want a puppy. Look at the little guys. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. I have puppy fever the way normal people have baby fever. No, not Michael with a mustache, bro. <laughs> In a fedora? The fedora oh. lore! Woo! Buddy pal. 1933, all right. If it's me, tell them to call my brother. Whoa, look at what the camera's doing. Ugh. Ugh. I can't believe they did a four year time jump right now, though. That's fucking wild. Hotel Robert. Je m'appelle Thomas Shelby, je réserve une salle de réunion. Ouais. Hier soir, des ivrognes ont brisé mes fenêtres. Les pigeons sont rentrés à l'intérieur de la pièce et ma femme est en train de les faire sortir. Je suis en avant, je suis entré. You want a drink? I have a glass of water, please. Windows got broke because a lot of people here are drunk and angry. Half the men on this island made their living bootlegging till today. The other half fixed their boats. Oh yeah, because if it's not legal anymore. Take the water into the hole. Tu travailles pour une compagnie de whisky, c'est ça? Je suis ici pour une affaire privée. Où t'as appris à parler français? En France. Yeah, I learned a lot of things in France. Island is crawling with your f***ing commissary men. Closing our warehouses down. Throwing men out of work. Jean-Claude, laisse cet tranquille. Ten years, our boat ran whiskey down the president roads to Boston. Now we have f***ing nothing. And you sit in front of us and order f***ing water. Is that meant to be a joke? I ordered water because I no longer drink alcohol of any kind. You, my friend, are going to drink a toast. You will raise your glass to the poor people of Mikono, whose lives you bastards have destroyed. Drink it. You are not leaving this bar until you have raised a toast to the people of Mikono. Okay. You still have your whiteboard. Mm. <laughs> I'm like rubbing away my. That today, of all days, he would be angry. Now, I've been very patient given the circumstances. But you need to sit down and let me read my newspaper. Oh! Oh! <gasps> not the one, my guy. Before this goes any further, please let me explain. I will not drink your toast, because four years ago I forswore alcohol. No. Damn, look at that gun. Since I forced what alcohol, I've become a calmer and a more peaceful person. Sometimes, in moments of personal conflict, I can resort to me old ways. If this were to happen now, it would indeed be a black day in Miklon. Now, my guests will be arriving shortly. I need to prepare the room. Can you show me where? Oh, well, birds did really break in because, well, he shot the one. Like, there it looks will, dry and there dank. There will be one I cannot tell. But which one I cannot tell? There will be one I cannot tell. Hello, Tommy. There's a man out there having his face stitched back up. I was a misunderstanding. Hello, Michael. I wasn't sure what I'd think when I saw you again, Tom. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Since my mother passed away four years ago, Tommy and I haven't even spoken. We've both been very busy. 
You've been too busy to punish the people who killed her. You know, Michael, when you're dealing with a very powerful enemy, taking revenge sometimes requires time. But now we have a business interest in common. And any bad blood will be diluted by time and a practical self-interest. Well, Tommy, I'm all keen to hear what you have to say. I'm very much looking forward to working with you again, Michael. You look very well. You too. How is the family? Elizabeth, Elizabeth, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. Yes, hi. Is that the Bell Tavern? If there's a gypsy in there called Johnny Dogs, can you tell him to come and round off his kids? <laughs> it's Christmas. Time for family. We're having this Christmas party early because tomorrow, me and Charles and Ruby are going on a big ship to Canada to be with their daddy. But we told Father Christmas about the party. Do you want presents? Oh, yes! Ada, <laughs> where the f is Father Christmas? I don't know. He was supposed to be here by now. So do you think so? Oh, sh <laughs> Arthur, drunk as a skunk. You better run! Gentlemen, today is the last day of prohibition. A new beginning. A new opportunity. But now that whiskey is about to become legal, the trade will fall back into the hands of capitalists from New York, Boston, and Toronto. When one door closes, another one opens. We can take advantage of the systems that are in place on Mickleon Island and offer selected boat crews the opportunity to carry on working. But this time, with a different cargo. No, it's all over the f island. This is an island with no models and no opinions. Just a load of fucking boats with nothing to carry and nowhere to go. Where do you get this stuff? I've established a supply chain over the last four years with Associates in Belfast. We decided it was time to break into the American market. That, my friend, is the finest opium in the world. We will have to uh, take your proposal to your Uncle Jack in Boston. Perhaps we can meet after you've spoken with Uncle Jack, Michael, who I believe is your wife's uncle, Jack Nelson. Hey! <laughs> The guy knows things that can get him killed, and he says them out loud. I have a high regard for Mr. Nelson. He has a history I don't like my own. Jack Nelson's past is forgotten. Not forgotten. Fucking gone. No, not gone. Just your eyes for the records like my own. You haven't touched your drink, Tom. You know, since we last met Michael, I now realise that whiskey is just fuel for the loud engines inside your head. Get <laughs> your cell phone. <laughs> what is this guy, a f***ing poet? Huh? Oh, I do read poetry, mm. but I don't yet write it. They say the fog is going to get worse. Better get off this island before the traps to see you. Just understand. Uncle Jack decides everything, and I decide when the meeting is over. So I'll sit down till I say, Oh, you're not even in charge, Michael? Put some fucking hair in your chest. Oh, this is like, mm, mm. <sighs> Good boy. <laughs> now, give us all a poem before we go. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath. My wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told it not. My wrath did grow. It's from The Poison Tree by William Blake. You won't have heard of him. <laughs> Meeting over. That guy's facial oh, expressions just... My friend, the police commissioner, told me that he'd spoken to his FBI liaison officer and he told him that there is an informant in your organisation in South Boston. I'll tell you this in the spirit of corporate hygiene. Hey, I'm Michael. Beware the man with the bleeding heart tattoo with Mania written in red. This time, I'll burn it. Should cut this off, I need to see an opportunity. Whoa! What is going on over there? Drunk ass Arthur. Oh, in Santa suit. He's gonna die. One day. I don't know how he hasn't already, to be honest. Yeah, truly. 
God, if Polly was still here, she'd never have let it get this bad. Arthur! I'm not Polly, but I am still your sister. You swore to me you would stop using. Yes, it's Christmas. Oh, I wonder if he's the using the opium. Presents. Oh, that's a syringe. Great. <gasps> My brother oh, that... some junk. Yeah, I'm calling from Mickelon Island, from the police station. There is a boat leaving the island now, heading across the border. When it docks at St. John's, a man named Michael Gray will board a ferry to Boston. Listen very carefully. He's wearing a dark coat, a blue suit, and carrying a black briefcase. Inside the briefcase is five pound of pure, refined opium. Concerned citizen. Yeah, my name is Mr. Jones. Do you have a camarade? Yes, I do. But I don't drink anymore. Pourquoi? I have business. Let's get off this island. So, what the f Can't talk about anything in here. Tell me Shelby steps back into your life and right away this is what happens? No names in here. Let's just call him the devil. Take a seat. How is Lawrence? Oh, you know. Missing his father. What the f happened, Michael? It's in hand. Whose hand? Like everything else in this city, it's in the hand of your Uncle Jack. I need him to get the charges lifted and get me out of here. I already talked to him. He told me what the devil proposed. Tommy Shelby wants to do business with Jack Nelson? He wants to take on Boston? No one is taking on anyone. It's in hand. It was Tommy himself who warned us of the informant. We're guessing that the informant was the one that tipped off the police about me. Then the devil's plan has already begun. What's the point of ships and planes if you can't get away? In today's paper, you're worried about a man being fished out of the Boston Harbor with a bleeding heart tattoo and the name Maria written on his arm. His death will lead to others. For this business to work, we must only use men we trust. And while the cleanup is being carried out, you must keep things to yourself. You talk loose to anyone, it'll be me in the harbor, and you'll be the Maria with the bleeding heart. Do you understand? Tell me what you're thinking of getting Lawrence for Christmas. There are plenty of men who can supply powder all over the world. I don't understand why it needs to be him. Some of my business with Tommy Shelby is unfinished. This is my opportunity to finish it. So I'll speak to your uncle and get me the f out of here. Whoa! Who? Sure. I heard you were in town, and I thought, well, hey, little man hitting the big time. You like jazz? No. I like jazz. <laughs> I have a message for your Uncle Jack. You know, my uncle's planning on buying the United States import license to all the best Scotch and Irish whiskey distilleries. He's on his way to London right now to make those deals. Every drop in every state will be another dime for Uncle Jack. He's a very powerful, very impressive man. I've only seen photographs when he was young, police mugshots, and more recently in high society magazines. I think this represents progress. And before you tell me what you want me to tell him, I have a message from him to you. No deal. Jack has friends in the government now. Do you have any idea of how far he's risen? Can't have white powder on his shiny black boots when he's on his way to meet the President of the United States, because, yeah, that's where he goes now. So he can't really be taking such a big risk on such a little deal. Go home, boy. Before I go, you should know that it was me who tipped off the border police about the contents of Michael's suitcase. I'm the reason he's in jail. I wanted to give your uncle a dilemma. His favorite niece's husband, banged up in Boston for smuggling opium. What does he do? If he intervenes and has him released, how will that play in the Oval Office? If he does nothing, how does that play in South Boston? Oh, f you. Fine. Stay here. Deal here, die here for all I f care. Hey. Oh. My message to your uncle is this. 
If he doesn't want to buy my opium, I will sell to the East Boston Jews. Do you want to start a f***ing war? With that amount of opium, the balance of power between the Irish, the Jewish, and the Italians would shift heavily in favor of the East. Once you people have accepted that you must treat us as equals, then I think our families will work together very well. Have a good day, Gina. Yes, I'll accept the call. Hello, Lizzie. Tommy. It's Ruby. She's not well. She's got a temperature of 101. The doctor's just left. What did he say? He says he thinks it's flu. Tommy, he said it's not a good idea for us to travel. We can't board that ship to Boston today. It's all right, Lizzie. Don't worry. Don't worry. You just stay there for now and get a better. And uh, Lizzie, I've a, I've a bit more business to do here. I'll get this business done. You get here with the children, and then no more. It's literally just a woman yeah, that's Lizzie else. adjacent. You know, out on the west. <laughs> like, what the place in the mountains. Tell Ruby. Tell Ruby I'll build her a snowman. How long has she been coughing? A few days. <sighs> She's been out running wild with Johnny Duck's kids out in the cold by the river. Last night she was burning up. She was delirious. Johnny's kids have been teaching her to speak gypsy. Teaching her to rob and steal more like. <laughs> yeah. When she was delirious, she kept saying these gypsy words, sir. Uh, Tiknamora. Tiknamora, oh, bang, go oh, bang, over and over again. What did she say? What did Ruby say? Tikna, Tiknamora, oh, bang, oh, oh bang. I don't no, know. Lizzie, did she say any other words in Roman? Listen to me. Oh, Tommy, I don't think so. Just Tiknamora, an old bang. Yes. Could she see anything when she was burning up? What could she see? Could you please just answer the f question? She said she could see a man. Uh, a man with green eyes. Well, it's obviously not good. Matter? All right, listen. Did so somebody put a curse on her? Tommy, it's just a fever, love. Listen to me, I'm coming home. I'll be on the next steamer back. You hear me? Being gypsy stuff. Yes, it is gypsy stuff. Stop! And you do everything that Johnny Dogs and his wife tell you. Do you understand me? I'll do it. All right, so coming up. I would. Yeah. And clearly, like he's panicked. Like you said, he hasn't been the same literally since. Like, whoa. Polly. The lights flickering. I know. I'm trying to get out. Paul, they're coming for me. Oh, son of a fucking bitch. Sound American, Michael. I have to go back to England early. Let's make this quick, okay? You just f people up and you run away. No, this business will continue. Jack Nelson is also traveling to England, to London and to Edinburgh to buy import licenses. How the fuck do you know where Jack Nelson's going? Well, I have copies of his itinerary, of his personal correspondence, letters from the President of the United States and his many mistresses. You're dead, Tommy. You're out of your f in depth, you threaten to sell to the Jews. And I have contacts in this prison. I don't need your f***ing people to look after me. Jack Nelson's getting me out of here. Oh, yeah? This is a letter from the president's personal secretary suggesting Jack Nelson keep you in here for a while longer, just until the press lose interest, Michael. F*** you. You will be released eventually, and then you can execute your business with me as before and go our separate ways once more, eh? When my mother died at the hands of your ambition, you didn't learn your limitations. Yikes, everybody's oh, warming him about limitations. his... Because the lady that called him from oh, his office, way, I don't remember her name, but... Mm -hmm. According to Jack Nelson's personal accounts, he bought passage for five people from Boston to Liverpool. Five people, his wife, his mistress, President Roosevelt's son, himself, and Gina Gray. Gina's coming to London, Michael. Well, I will be happy to show the sights. You f***ing bastard! Spirits, Boston Irish, Uncle Jack. I'm ready for the conversation. Polly Gray. Oh, I think the actress died in real life. Did she really? Yeah. No, rest in peace. Oh, she died in 2021. She's only 52. That's nice. Peacefully at home, surrounded by a wave of love from friends and family. 
that makes me more sad than I know. I know that will make me cry. So we're going to just move past that. All right. Rest in peace. Um, That's really sad. Okay. Well, the beginning of the season is kind of wild. I, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm this excited too. To crazy. And I do want to know what the hell's going on with his daughter then. Yeah. That he freaked the fuck out. Like, yeah. It's not, not good. Not good. Not good at all. So, um, yeah. And I, I don't know, obviously it, this will dig more into the politics of it because most, nothing happened with Mosley. Yeah. Um, but well, the got, IRA was taking care of it. I think they like yeah. wanted him to live longer or something. So I yeah. wonder how that like actually, actually plays out. Yeah. Or if we even get to know, cause it's been four years, yeah. four year gap. Right. So, Ooh. yeah. Um, all right guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us and we'll catch you in the next one. See you guys. Bye.